33 story hotel and condo project. I'd probably be okay, like, like that. Okay, like stop. Tap. This is a plan by the community for the community. This one here. <laughs> no problem, Ken. Thanks for having me. It's Kent Milgat for Kelowna Now. And joining us is Donna Rabbit. Donna, who just recently got one of these, right? An naloxone kit. That's right. So they trained you on how to use an naloxone kit, which includes a syringe using an orange. Tell me about that. Was it hard to learn how to use a kit like this? No, it was really easy to learn. It was surprisingly easy to learn. Um, and the girl who, who taught us um, gave us a lot of information about harm reduction and, and the background of, of um, who needs this. And, uh, and, then, and then she said, okay, let's grab an orange, everybody grab an orange. And she, we took out the syringe and we, um, she showed us how to break the, the ampule, draw up the liquid, and then you just boom into the orange. Press the press the plunger, and it goes click, and that click tells you that it's gone in, and then the needle just retracts back in, so you, there's no worry about poking yourself or anything. Right, and that's it. So so you knew how to use it, and you carried it with you, thinking on the off chance you just might be able to help somebody. That's right. But as it turned out, it didn't take long before you really had an occasion to use it. Tell me what was going on. Tell us the story. Uh, it was exactly three weeks after I took my training and I was leaving work and uh, I took the elevator up to the top uh, floor of the parkade and as the elevator door opened I saw a girl um, lean against the, the concrete and her eyes were wide open, beautiful red gorgeous hair, big blue eyes and I looked at her and I thought oh my goodness that she doesn't look good. And, uh, and then I, I was leaving to go out to my car and a, a young fellow was coming in. And then I realized, oh, he's with her, so he's taking care of her. And um, so I started my car and I, it had snowed, so I had to go and take the snow off my car. And in the time that I was scraping the snow off, I looked back three times. The first time her eyes were closed and she had slumped down a little bit. And the second time I looked back, he was down prodding her. And the third time I looked back, he had dropped his bag, backpack, and he was attempting to lift her up. And I knew it was not a good situation, so I ran back in and I said to him, um, do you have a kit? And he said, no, not on me. And I said, I have a kit. So I ran back to my car and brought it in and I passed it to him thinking, He's going to know what to do, and I called 911. And uh, as I was trying to listen to 911 on what we needed to do, he came up to me with the syringe and the and the naloxone in his hand, and he said, "Can you do this?" And uh, so I grabbed it and um, and I broke it off. And and um, at this point, she's she's not breathing. She's making awful sounds of a non-breathing person and uh, and um, so we do the naloxone shot and he says I'm gonna start mouth-to-mouth -mouth. and uh, in the kit there's also a mouth-to-mouth -mouth guard so he's got that and he's doing mouth-to-mouth -mouth and um, we're waiting for the ambulance to arrive. A mouth-to-mouth -mouth guard that's a for doing mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. It's a fabric? It's a plastic sheet okay. with a one-way valve so oh. that um, your air is only going in and nothing. That comes in the kit out. as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So was it difficult to do that, to, to, to give that injection? Not at all. It was so quick. It's a draw the liquid up and find a big muscle, boom, click, and you're done. And then so she's had the injection. Did, could you, did it take long for there to be some reaction? From um, it did take a while. When, when I looked at my 911 call in the end, it was seven minutes long. Um, so I hung up as soon as the ambulance attendants arrived. So I'm guessing that we were probably there with her for trying to resuscitate for um, probably about five or six minutes. 
did you see her regain consciousness i did it she was starting to regain she was starting to get some color back in her face while we were waiting for the ambulance to arrive and by the time the attendants arrived she was starting to breathe on her own again um, and so yes, wow. she was, by the time i was i had hung up and i was ready to leave um, she was sitting up and uh, talking and how did you feel when you saw first the color come back and then in, in her breathing normally, I guess, or, or fairly normally? How, how did it feel to see her revived by your actions? Um, uh, just a great sense of relief. Uh, probably the point where I started seeing her face change color from bluey green to a natural skin color again was my first relief and my second big relief was watching those uh, ambulance attendants walk through the door and right. take over. And um, so this was a, how old was this woman, girl? I thought she was in her early 20s when the ambulance, or when the 911 attendant asked how old, I said, I'm guessing early 20s and the fellow she was with said she's 15. Oh my goodness. And um, did you ever make eye contact with her? I did. So once she was revived again and she sat up and they were talking to her, the ambulance attendants were talking to her, um, she asked her friend who had given her the shot and he pointed up to me. I was standing off to the side and, and uh, he pointed up to me and she looked up at me and... So she was asking who had, who had given her the injection? Mm -hmm. And he pointed to you? And she was crying. She was pretty upset. It's a pretty harrowing experience for her, I'm, I have no doubt. And she looked up at me and she was crying and she said, thank you so much. And, uh, and that, it was, that, was a, that was a good feeling. You know, at that point, I went, you know what, this was terrifying for me, but <clears throat> it was a really good feeling. Yeah. And you were saying earlier that, okay, you saved this young woman's life. Who knows how she's doing now, but then you saw her. I did. <clears throat> it was about a month ago when I was walking to work, and I just saw her at the crosswalk, and I, I just, it made me feel really good. And I felt very protective of her from afar. You know, we never spoke. I, she, I don't, she didn't see me, but I saw her, and I, I just, I just was privately very thankful to see her again. Well, it's nice that, you know, you see the humanity in it. I think a lot of people see all of these street people as a problem and the individuals as an extension of that, but here's a 15-year-old that is somebody's daughter. That's exactly right. Yeah, it, everybody's got their own story. We don't know it. Yeah. But did it still look like this girl is still at risk? Still living the street life, it would seem? I think so. It was early. It was not early, super early in the morning, but it was early in the morning, and she had a blanket wrapped around her as she was yeah. walking down the street. Boy, something is wrong, isn't it, that a 15-year-old is just living like that with a blanket and on the street? Yes, it's sad. But you did your part, and, and, and you're also encouraging other people to do the same. It, it, I mean, it doesn't take a lot to carry around that. I mean, it, you fit that in your glove compartment or in your handbag. Well, you're not meant to leave it in your drug compartment. Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're, in your glove In your glove compartment. <laughs> okay, so what is the correct place uh, to carry it? On your person. Um, you don't want extreme heat or extreme cold to get okay. to it. So you want to keep it with you. Um, uh, but no, it's, I've had a lot of people say to me, I've had um, a government office get training because they, they've heard about it. Um, I've had a radio station get training. I've talked to a number of individuals who have gone out and got themselves a kit. Uh, it's, it's really nice to see that, you know, it, it, it makes me think about, remember back in the day when you could um, get on, go through airport security and you walk through with your bottle of water and you walk through with your boots on and those days are gone. We don't get to do that anymore. You got to take your boots off. You got to yeah. hand over your water. And I feel it's the same thing with this opioid crisis. We don't, we don't get to not have that in our life right now. It is here. 
I know. So it's nice to see people recognizing that, and it's nice to be having this conversation and right. getting well, it Well, yeah, there. and by doing it, I mean, your life-saving experience could, in turn, save more lives. That's right. Open it up. Let's just have a quick look. Let's demystify this thing. There's right. nothing too scary in there, is there? There isn't. There isn't. It comes with a pair of rubber gloves, some alcohol wipes. This is the the mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation um, guard. And it comes with three syringes and three ampules of the naloxone. And then if you're really stumped and you don't have 911 at your back and call, you've got the information there on what to do. So if anybody who sees this would like to equip themselves with it and get enough training to be able to use it, what do they do? It's, I'm not sure where you go right now. I've, I've been reading a lot saying that it's, it's much more readily available. So I think you can go to Interior Health. I think you can go right. to the different pharmacies. When I used my kit and I wanted to get a new one, I went to the pharmacy, nobody had it. Right. That was only two months ago now pharmacies have them how right. great is that 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 it's there's change right it's much easier for people to get a hold of it terrific yeah. donna rabbit thank you so much for coming in and telling your story thank you for having the conversation right. and you're watching Kelowna now